you here for? You know, I value your life. I hope that you, all the potentials that you carry with you and all your abilities and quirks and everything will come together to fulfill and potentiate your being here. Truly hope that. And I hope that you will then plant the seed that was passed to you. Watery, you know, if you just drop it, it won't grow. But so that it will grow to be so very tall and thick tree harvesting with fruit. And when you partake this fruit, because you've gone through all of this challenges, you know, somebody going up, I didn't explain a little bit in the manuscript form. They said, you know, they're going to think you planted marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you keep on giving me so much trouble. I had this <laughs> wonderful, wonderful idea of all oh, the fruit make you feel good. <laughs> so I had to put in that they remember all the caring experiences, okay? <laughs> Don't people have imaginations? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so that's how, you know, and it is true, I don't deny you, in order for me to get here to stay alive, I really had lots of wonderful, caring relations. And the couple goes, you know, like a Johnny Appleseed, passing the seas, across the nation, <coughs> the country that dropped the bomb. And you know, these are all metaphors. Atom bomb is a metaphor, the worst thing you can do to a human being, okay? And we have a flawed human nature in which to wish that. And I don't say, it's okay, don't do it. But I'm saying, who am I? You know? And who are you to be? <laughs> We have to return to really seek to humility and wonderment, wonderment of life and the humility that we are human being, truly wonderful, but can truly be awful as well. And choose wisely, maybe not always, but go you forth choosing wisely, planting seeds of peace. Thank you. So any questions? How old, how old were you when this happened? I was in sixth grade. Sixth grade, yes. around 10 or 12, something like that? Oh, uh, yeah, 10. Okay. And I was very you, precautious. Yeah. <laughs> and you talked about going to the village and they all picked on you. I don't understand what was their problem. I didn't either, what their problem <laughs> was. You know, I think what it was, was that I was just like this then, very obnoxious, you know. Yeah, you're not obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> And the Japanese girls, <laughs> oh. no, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, what's this place? You know, let's sort of a scout around. And then there was, a, I, I was an athlete, and there was a, a steel bar, you know. So I jumped on it, and I did a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. turning and doing um. this. And the, them boys didn't yeah. know how. <laughs> and then they said, oh, that girl. So I think it got to them. You know, they wanted to tease to 
put me down a little. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but I, I didn't. Uh, but I took it seriously. I was miserable. You know, I didn't know what was the matter. And there was one boy who was sort of a fair. You know, it wasn't all tanned and dark like the other country boys. So he must have moved also from some city. Anyway, he always wore red cap, you know. And I noticed he never, ever joined to tease me. And I really appreciated that, but especially, you know, one day, we, we were so hungry, we had to go out and pick edible uh, grass. Now, I was going edible grass hunting, and I could have killed myself. I almost grabbed something that went like this and moved. It was a black snake, you know, so I, ah! And then there was sort of a chuckle in the background. Listen, that's not a harmful snake. You don't have to be afraid. And that was that boy, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And um, so I said, I don't care. I don't like snake, any snake. And we started to talk, you know? And it made me feel like a human being. He, he was really a savior, you know, yeah. So there's always somebody you can relate to, you know? It's incredible. Maybe that's how you get married and that's how you have great friendships and, <laughs> right? You know, you are kind of, if you don't give up, you're kind of taken care of. <laughs> Hi. How old were you when you moved to the United States? Well, a uh, little past 18, almost 19. I was a freshman. Um, and this guy is standing, says, you know, not I'm supposed to be ordering from this thing with Peter Rabbit and Mr. <laughs> Hyde and Dr. Jekyll. No way. No idea. So this is it. I said, I will have carrots, peas, and potatoes. And I recognize those from Peter Rabbit. <laughs> he stood there. That's all, man? Yes, that is all. <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, the acculturation took a long time. Having a good time now. <laughs> yes. Um, but I didn't know a thing about where I was heading to a block college, so I got off the train to change to, you know, New Orleans in, to Greensboro, and it says, white only, color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hadn't the slightest idea what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. Colored, white, what are you supposed to paint with? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then there was nothing in between. <laughs> so, you know, I tried both. Ran into this, and then run into this, but never very slow or long time because somebody would tell me I don't belong there. <laughs> and I didn't know which. <laughs> you know, I look about this, <laughs> you know. Obviously not white, but not exactly dark either. <laughs> so, but very quickly I learned that 
white only. It was very nice. Colored. They hadn't cleaned the place. Yeah, that was a very mean system. Yeah. And uh, so I understood. But it was very interesting. I noticed, you know, I transferred to uh, Midwest uh, College after two years. Uh, when I first got to, uh, you know, this black college, everybody was very congenial, you know. And, of course, you know, I'm not shy, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was running into people's rooms and asking questions. Can I help you straighten your hair? Oh, no! <laughs> you know, that ladies used to use burning practically uh, the iron thing mm -hmm. to pull it out. And I probably would have burned the scalp if they left me. <laughs> Anyhow, so, um, and Midwestern school, where I changed, it was coed instead of, you know, all women with the Bennett was. No door was closed. Everyone was really sweet and polite and nice. But I, I, I just knew. I couldn't run into their rooms. Mm -hmm. And one I remember the experience I most, most feel regretful. A PhD psychologist who was teaching, I still remember his name. I mean, he's been dead long since, but he's alive in my mind, people. Dr. Becker had his PhD from the University of Chicago in psychology. That's why I couldn't get over it, because University of Chicago is really top notch. Really make you work hard, believe me. Had a survey, social attitude survey. And there was a question, and some of this was, different racial groups, ethnic groups, you know, Koreans, Chinese, Asians, white, and this, and this, and this. And the questions were, would you consider associating with them? Would you consider going to party with them? Would you consider this? Until to the very intimate, you know, close relationship. And I'm telling you, I was absolutely 100% honest. I said yes to all of them, provided they were very decent people, <laughs> kind and, you know, reasonably intelligent. Because that was one thing I really was <laughs> racist about. Mm -hmm. You had to be smart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so then, you know, he comes back with a report and he says, Sort of like expected, he says. Most people didn't want to associate with anybody outside of their own social class and race and this and that. I had to throw away, he said, one response. <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't fall in that pattern. Mm. <laughs> and you know, I felt so hurt that my response wasn't counted because I really meant it. You know, it's possible for one to have an attitude to be open if you don't mean any harm to you and you are very smart and interesting and bright. It would help if you're good looking, but <laughs> I mean, if you're a guy, because I'm not gay, okay? <laughs> but. That has nothing to do with this. If I offended anybody, terribly sorry. <laughs> anyway, but it was then, right? And, uh, and, and then I couldn't understand it. I absolutely couldn't understand it and felt very repulsed by it. A man who didn't count my response when the school was called Wooster. 
um, I think he lived somewhere. Um, oh, yes, he also had a theological degree from the University of Chicago. Um, yes, he had a theological degree. Yeah. And then became a pastor, Presbyterian pastor in the hoity-toity suburb of Chicago. So a lot of us, you know, um, visited him in his church. And um, yeah, I think maybe he was a second pastor and a senior pastor, you know, he was introducing us. And when my turn came, he said, you know, this is a lady who was a survivor of Hiroshima. And it, as far as I was concerned, that was not necessary. Yeah. You know, I, I, I felt like I was put upon to be served like a plate. Yeah. If it sounds gory and terrible, I'm sorry. But as a college, you know, not so long after graduation. And right now, I used the opportunity to say, blah, 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 you know, but then, I, want, I didn't want anybody to tell me that I was from anywhere that I had to remember. Wanted to f get far away. Didn't want to think about it. You know, leave me alone. That's just none of your business. Anyway, so that's my early experiences in this country. I went back to Japan, couldn't find a job, and so bounced back. I have all these lovely, interesting pictures in the thumb drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you like me to pass the sheets around, the photocopy? What is it? The photocopy that you made of, from your drive? Or the oh, copy? Shall oh, I, pass oh it I don't even tell that. Where is it? Do you have it on your desk? Do I have it? Yes, it's on the desk. No, you could hardly see it because it's in a small cell. Anyway, so, you know, what I'm able to do, um, ooh, maybe there are some pictures that you can see. Although the music you can hear, it's just a really beautiful. This is Mary Frances Jones, Methodist missionary who really, really cared about us. In Hiroshima? Yes. This is Hiroshima. I heard at the end of a radio program, this is the Methodist group that came and set up a service. Yes, service yes, right my friend, my friend. In 45. Oh, really? No, no, oh. I'm asking you, is that what you said on the radio today? Yes. Right, right then. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody told me that you were collecting 10 cents and stuff like that. They came with that money and did good. Wonderful woman. <laughs> but you know, you have to understand also humanness about this. She lost her father when she was eight years old. So she knew about grief. You know, I think she was, you know, one of his favorite, I'm sure everyone was his favorite, but especially, and uh, it was kind of interesting because I, I learned about her mother. She was also uh, uh, lost her mother, you know, her own mother's mother. Her grandmother died early, and then so her mother. Mary's grandmother loved flowers. So when she was lonesome, she went around picking flowers and putting it in her apron. And then her, Mary's home was always surrounded with flowers because her mother loved flowers. See where she's standing. I did, and it didn't occur to me. She is posing in front of a flower arrangement. You know, this woman connected to her grief and then to her mother's love of flowers. She was authentically there. You see, when you make 
connections with Samaritans or ethnicity or whatever. You have to have some authentic connecting point. Otherwise, it's going to feel like a fraud. And it isn't going to mean. Although, if you go to Japan and teach English, they'll love you for it, you know. So, is there anybody else? Yeah. Oh, some of it here. San Francisco Bay, uh -huh. boat just docked, 1952. President McKinley, I thought I was dipped out to be the most fashionable. <laughs> the, the felt, black felt hat with a string so it doesn't blow away, and the suit that was made from pretty big, you know, so used up, and then shoes that didn't fit me and was too tight, and I was trying to make it big enough by wearing them in striped socks. Can you imagine? <laughs> anyway, I just loved it. I just loved every minute. Okay, this is my aunt and uh, her friends I was telling you about. Uh, Miro is my aunt Yoshiko, who brought turtles from Shikoku Island and chopped the turtle heads, and my father <coughs> caught the dripping blood and then forced me, drink this. And that's in the middle of my uh, Avon sickness. And my mm -hmm. fevers went mm -hmm. there after that. Mm -hmm. You know, blood, iron, I, I don't. Th listen, if you ever get nuked, <laughs> go look for a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah? OK. Oh, that was the last full picture, I think. Anyway, you know. Oh. Here's question. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So to further understand then that you had gone to this village, you'd gone from Hiroshima to the village. Yeah. And then when the bomb was dropped, then was this a village that was just out of outside of Hiroshima? Way, way outside. Uh huh. Yeah. I had pictures of those too. <laughs> How far away? Well, you know, now, probably driving, you can get there in a few hours, mm -hmm. but you know? A couple hundred yeah. miles. Yeah, but in those days, the trains moved slow, buses, there's a, you had to go up a mountain pass, the, the, even buses had to go slow, you know, mm -hmm. and then go, and then finally there. And, you know, we had bundles to carry, and then they said, you must carry it with you. What do you mean? You know, when little kids, the buses can't go through the patches of rice field. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway. So I was thinking, why couldn't they think of asking village man, you know? <laughs> ah, teacher, we can't lift it up. Huh? And then there were, you know, steps to go. And these were children who were, you know, very well-heeled families, a private school and all those. No reason, you know, we shouldn't be asked to do what we could do. But everything we had to do was way beyond our capabilities. And next morning, okay, oh, that night we had to roll out our futon. And there's a very distinct tradition that you don't put your head toward north in Japan because that's when you die. No. You put the futon and then put the head, head in. Right, Noriko-san? So, you know, we couldn't tell which is north. <laughs> it was a dangerous, we're going to die! <laughs> anyway, but we were so tired, we didn't care. <laughs> Next morning, we wake up, and then, we, you know, we got a toothbrush, and uh, in those days, we used powder, tooth powder. Uh, tooth powder. Where, 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 where's the, uh, you know, water? 
You go down to the stream and wash the... What? <laughs> Nobody told us there wasn't going to be any facilities, you know? I mean, gee whiz, that was very... I mean, it wasn't the breach of promise or anything, but we were so unprepared, you know? Yeah. And it was only a very short time. But if I hadn't had that time, I remember the day we left was when the city of Hiroshima bid goodbye to all the children, third grade and up, or fourth grade and up, because it was getting too dangerous. And you know, the, the government policy, they didn't want all the Japanese to be dead, at least the kids to survive. Well, I didn't know that was that, you know, terrible. So when my mother gives me this little pouch, says, what is it, mother? It's a lock of my hair and clippings of your father's nail. Whatever. Why? Well, you don't need to worry about it because, you know, the victory is around the corner and the war will end and you'll come home very soon and everything is going to be okay. But just in case anything, something happens, you will have something and we can be with you always. And I'm like, no. <laughs> that wasn't the story I heard was the reason we're going away. Not for farewell forever. I'm not going anywhere, you know. So, but if that didn't take place, believe me, I wouldn't have made it through this ordeal of the bomb experience. Because I had already gone through, you know, the challenges. So, you know, every step of the hard stuff that happens to you, you can get something out of. Even if it's intolerable, yeah. If you don't turn around and then, you know, start sniffing and then shooting up or whatever, hmm. but challenge yourself and really cope with it straight head on. Mm 